in the first laboratory you will experiment with the platform tc lab and for that you need the zip file tc lab software that is available on the web page of the course once you have downloaded the zip file you can unzip it and then go to matlab and this is what you will obtain I will give you a brief presentation of TC Lab because this has been tackled already in the theoretical course. Remember that the system is Arduino based and has two inputs and two outputs. The inputs are the heating powers respectively to the first and second transistor, so to the first and second heater. This heating power is expressed in percent. So why is this expressed in percent? Well, this means that if the heating power is 50%, for example, well, during the sampling period, which is TS is equal to one second, the digital input is set to one 50% of the time. This is called pulse width modulation. So the two inputs are in between 0 and 100%, right? This is also the case for the second heating power, 0 to uh, 100%. And there are two outputs. This is the temperature T1, which is expressed in degree Celsius, and then you have the second temperature which is also expressed in degree celsius as you remember the first temperature sensor is attached to the heat sink that is connected to the first heater and the second temperature sensor is attached to the heat sink connected to the second transistor to the second heater well remember that the process is non-linear and multivariable. There are two inputs and two outputs. And well, each input is influencing both outputs. So the first heating power is of course influencing T1, but it's also influencing T2. And well, the second heating power is influencing T2, but it is also influencing T1. This coupling effect this is how this is called is amplified by adding a metallic link between the heat sinks on tc lab i will show you a picture next so what we will do is call this one mv and this one pv right because in our course we work with single input single output system so this will be our input this will be our output and we'll consider this to be a disturbance variable that is accessible for measurement this second temperature output will not be used it will be shown but it will not be used in this course this is the metallic bar that I've added in between the heat sinks in order to increase the coupling effects. Coupling effects from well, disturbance variable, in our case the second heating power input, to PV, in our case the first temperature output. From platform to platform, this metallic bar will be different in length and this will produce a system that might be different than the one your neighbor is working on so with the conventions that we have decided upon before we end up with a single input single output system with a disturbance variable so mv is the first heating power pv is the first output temperature and dv is the second input right so what we'll do since the system is non-linear is to work around an 
operating point mv0 is equal to 50 percent dv0 is equal to 50 percent right and if we apply mv is equal to 50 percent and dv is equal to 50 percent and we wait long enough until the transients have disappeared and that we are in steady state this will lead to a pv0 well that will actually depend on your platform but that you can obtain experimentally so what you will do during the first laboratory is to experiment on the system around the operating point mv is equal to 50 percent and dv is equal to 50 percent in a first experiment you'll leave dv at 50 right and you'll make a step at the input so for instance here from 25 to 75 percent so here we assume when you do this change at the input that pv here is in steady state right and then you look at the response on pv so on the first output temperature this will allow us to obtain a description of the input output dynamics between mv and pv this has been discussed during the course and this will be explored also during the control lab in a second experiment we'll leave mv at 50 percent and we'll do a step change on dv so for instance here from 25 percent to 75 percent and we look at the influence on pv so the first output temperature notice that the curves that are given here in these slides are indicative because they come from experiments without this metallic bar so in this second experiment because of the coupling that is now higher you will see here a delta pv in steady state that is much higher than indicated over here using those two experiments we'll be able to obtain a linearized description of the tc lab system that is valid around the working point mv0 dv0 so mv0 is equal to 50 percent and dv0 is equal to 50 percent we'll obtain a description of the so-called input output dynamics which we will model using a transfer function p of s that links the input mv to the output dv under the assumption that dv is equal to dv0 when dv deviates from dv0 we'll need a description of the disturbance dynamics d of s and this is another transfer function that takes as input the deviation from 50 percent and computes a correction on the output temperature the descriptions of p of s and d of s will be obtained using system identification an optimization procedure based on the matlab function f min search will fit the output of a second order system with delay to the experimental data and this will lead to the identification of the process gain the two lag time constants and the process delay you will also use classical graphical methods to determine the process parameters of the input output transfer function p of s using different model structures you will only do this for p of s because this is really work intensive these graphical methods are explained in the laboratory assignment well the laboratory assignment is available on the web page dedicated to this course in this laboratory assignment 
you'll find a description of what you need to do in order to interact with DC Lab using MATLAB Simulink. Obviously, the first thing that you have to do is to make sure that you have a MATLAB Simulink running on your PC and you should do this installation before the first laboratory session. This MATLAB Simulink version should be a 2018A version or a later version. In the description of the course, on the web page dedicated to this course, you'll find a link where you can obtain the MATLAB and Simulink student suits. There is a link on which you can click. The second thing that you should do, and again, you should do this before the first laboratory session, is to install the MATLAB Arduino support. Right, and to do this, you can click on this link that will bring you to well the installation of TEC Lab, and you should go down and look at the following video that is about Arduino with MATLAB and Simulink. Optionally, you can install the Arduino software, but this is not really necessary for our control lab. And you can also make sure that you know how to handle and how to connect TEC lab. This is actually the same link as here above. Once the MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware is installed, we can go back to MATLAB and this software that you have downloaded from the web page associated to the course and that you have unzipped. And this is what we have obtained. You're now ready to connect your TC Lab platform to your computer via USB and to make the correct power connection as indicated in the control lab assignment what you should see is arduino leonardo detected and this device is ready for use with matlab support package right here you see an additional message this is because i have also installed the simulink support package if interested you can install it as well you can now open the simulink file tc lab identification it's an mdl file so let's close this one and this is what you see and what you can now do is run and this should connect to your TC lab environment as you can see the heating powers HP1 and HP2 are set to 50% and we should see the output temperatures appearing soon this is taking a while because it's the first time the code is compiled as you can see So you've probably heard a little noise, so this is looking good. So now you're connected in real time and as you can see the temperature is around 20 degrees. But from now on we are applying this 50% heating power so the temperature is going to climb. So I'm going to stop the video until we have arrived at a steady state. Well, as you can see, the output temperature has increased. We can even obtain the transient if you look at the curve. So the heating power has remained constant, right? And this is the evolution of T1 and the evolution of T2. As you can see, we have arrived now at a steady state. So what we can do is well, write down our working point or operating point and we'll do this by 
writing down these values in an M file. So here are the parameters. So MV0 is equal to 50%. TV0, we'll copy this one, it will be faster. So this is DV0, and then we need to have a look at PV0, and that was around well, 73, and this is in degree Celsius let's have a, a last check so it's around even 75 degree Celsius so that will be our working point so what we'll do now is a experiment around heating power one so that's MV here evolving around this 50% so we could for instance take 30 to 70 percent 25 percent to 75 percent well it all depends on the situation if there is a lot of noise on pv yes or not this is something that you could check out during the control lab what we'll do here now is a well step change at the input on mv from 30 to 70 percent so we'll decrease this one to 30 percent and of course what we'll have to do is wait and you can see here the decrease in mv right we'll have to wait until t1 has settled down again so again i will stop the video until we have reached this steady state so as you can see we have reached a new steady state we can have a look at the scope we have lost the first part of the response because but we can change that if we increase the time span you can see now that we have reached a new steady state right of course the first temperature has decreased but through the coupling effect we see also that the second temperature has decreased so what we'll do now is stop the simulation very briefly and restart it since this is very short this is not going to have an effect and what we'll do is do our step change and this is the one that we'll be using for identification so we have a heating power i've introduced here mv pv and dv so that it's clearer so we have increased mv from 30 to 70 percent and we'll look at the influence on pv the first temperature and as usual we'll wait until we have a steady state and in the meantime i will stop the video so as you can see over here we have reached a steady state you can see it even more clearly on the curves over here so what we can do is stop the experimentation and this is what you obtain what you can do now is keep this and print it to a pdf document right so we'll call this step mv simulink right so if you do this you see that the document appears over here but you can see that everything is well cut wrongly so what you can do is open the figure and then do print to figure and then you obtain a, another figure but that's a MATLAB figure and then 
there is a readme here you can use this command here and run it in the command window and we'll use the name step m v and then simulink and then hopefully this will work better and as you can see everything is complete now so based on the experimental data we can start the identification procedure and then to prepare the data we should push on one of these two buttons we have done an experiment on mv so we should push on this one to prepare the data so let's do this and as you can see this is what you obtain this is the original data a step from 30 to 70 percent and the response here on the output temperature and this is the cleaned data where you only see the step and everything has been brought back to a step of what well, one percent heating power and then the influence on the temperature so this we can save as a pdf document as well so we'll call this step mv original and this will be the cleaned data so if we look we should now have the original data over here and the cleaned data over here well, once we have prepared the data, we can push on the identification based on prepared data. And this window will appear. It will show the cleaned data and what this optimization routine using fmin search will do is to fit a second order system with delay. Here's the gain, the two lag time constants and the delay to the experimental data right so these are the initial parameters of the second order model as you can see these parameters are completely off because you can see here already that the static gain should be approximately 0.6 and we can see here that the gain is negative but this doesn't matter this optimization routine will fit the output of the model by changing these parameters here of course to fit the experimental data all you need to do is to push the start button as you can see the gain was negative so the model was going the wrong way but here already the gain has been corrected right and you can see that the output of the model here in black is fitting the experimental data better and better this optimization procedure is an iterative procedure so it takes a while and what you see here is the cost function it's the well, difference between the experimental results and the output of the model this is giving you at each time instant an error and it's the sum of the errors squared that is actually optimized minimized so here we have reached the end of the optimization we are not completely satisfied we'll run the optimization procedure again but starting from these parameters over here as you can see now it's starting to improve And we'll reach the end of the optimization soon and I think we're going to be satisfied yes because this is a very good fit so this is the identified gain of the van der Grinten model a van der Grinten model is a model with two lag time constants a gain and a delay and again we should save the results of this identification so we'll 
save this under a PDF format so we'll call this step MV identification and this will save the file so what we should do is check if our saving operation has been performed correctly and it looks like it so this is okay so what we can do now is save our workspace so that we keep all the variables if we need to work on these variables later to for instance generate a plot so what we'll do is simply save step mv and it will will save the whole workspace in a mod file okay so even the figure has been saved in this mod file although this creates a very large file so what you can do now is take the results of our identification procedure and copy these parameters in the variables.m file so i have prepared everything and this will be used later to simulate our process so we'll now do the second experiment we'll do a step change on dv right so we'll start from dv is equal to 30 percent and we'll make a step change up to 70 percent so the simulink model is running we have just made the change to 30 percent heating power for dv which is equal to the second heating power as you see and we need to wait for a steady state so i uh, will stop the video so we have arrived at a steady state as you can see what we'll do is stop the experiment for a brief moment and then start it again as you can see this has no impact and what we'll do here is now a step change and we'll go from 30% heating power to 70% heating power so this is a change in dv dv here is the heating power 2 so this is going to take some time to arrive at a steady state right here you see the change so what i'll do is stop the video again as you can see we have arrived at a steady state for t1 and t2 so what we can do now is stop the experiment and we can have a look at this experiment and here it is so of course you can start saving things but this is the same as what i explained for mv nevertheless make sure that you save these data under pdf format and this is the well step change on dv as you can see and the influence on t1 so we'll do the identification procedure again but now we'll identify the disturbance dynamics we have just done a step on a dv so we should push the second button so let's do this and this is what you obtain and again you have the original data a step change of dv from 30 percent to 70 percent the influence on the output temperature so the influence on pv and here you have the cleaned data so everything is brought back to a step change of one percent on dv and its influence in terms of delta pv so again what i'll do is save all those data under pdf format We'll do now the identification using this second experiment so we'll obtain a model for the disturbance dynamics and for this we have to push this button so we have here the cleaned data of the second experiment this is this unit step on dv on the second heating power and here you see the influence on pv 
the right and PV is the first output temperature. We can expect a gain around 0.44 or something like that and this has to be compared with the static gain of the input output dynamics that was 0.6 so this gain here in the this terms dynamics is rather high and this is because of this coupling that we have induced using this metallic bar between the heat sinks we'll start the identification from the same initial parameters as before and we just have to push the start button as you can see the optimization routine is fitting the output of the model here in black to the experimental data by adapting the parameters of this van der Grinten model so the gain the two lag time constant and the delay so after one run this is what we obtained we are not entirely satisfied so we'll continue the optimization from the parameters that we have obtained or had obtained and as you can see well the optimization is doing better and better the fit is indeed improving and as you can see it looks like we're going to be satisfied with this fit when the optimization stops so these are the parameters of our van der Grinte model so two time cons is again and a delay that has been identified using this second experiment and this yields a model of the disturbance dynamics so of course i'll save again this figure under pdf format for our archives as you can see the results of the step on dv have been saved under pdf format what remains to be done is to save all the parameters in the workspace so we'll save these parameters in a file that we'll call step dv so and then we have here a mat file and here again this figure is saved in this mat file and this explains why this file is a big file so what needs to be done is to copy the parameters that you see over here the result of the second identification and the identification of the disturbance model and these parameters we should copy in our file variables right so what we'll do is copy them i've prepared everything here below so these are the parameters for the disturbance dynamics in the well second third and fourth control lab will use these parameters for modeling but also for the design of the feed forward and these ones will also be used for tuning the bid controller what still needs to be done is points five six and seven from the assignment so five obtain broida van der Grinten and stretch models via graphical methods so you need to use the first experimental step response to obtain a model of the input output dynamics you do not need to do five six and seven for the second experiment in order to use those graphical approximation methods you'll need your first experimental step on mv so what you can do is use this pdf format of the step response the one that we have saved right and this is why it's so important to save it you can print it out as large as you can and use these graphical methods what you could do as well since we have saved our original data is use the data that is available in this mod file to create a figure that suits your purposes 
As discussed before, those classical graphical methods are discussed at the end of the control lab assignment. After point four and point five, you should have four models. The one identified using the optimization procedure and three models obtained using graphical methods. So what you can then do is compare the simulated step responses with those four models with the actual step response that you have obtained experimentally. Then in MATLAB, what you can do is compare the four models in the frequency domain. So this means in a body diagram and discuss this.